welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Federal High Court in Lagos orders the return of $793 million hidden in seven banks to the federal government's treasury single account. The former Vice President Atiku Abubakar clarifies his position on restructuring, insists proposal is to ensure Nigeria's unity and development at local level. National Economic Council recommends new criteria for disbursement of ecological funds to states. And UN raises alarm over worsening drought in North Korea, says children and the elderly at great risk as country faces severe food shortages. And on business news tonight, Nigeria's acting president, Professor Yemi Ashibajo, seeks transfer of 135.6 billion naira to finance critical priority projects in 2017 budget. And on sports news tonight, participating teams in the Nations Cup finals increased to 24 and the finals to now hold in the month of June. And from Abuja, Senate makes U-turn, confirms the appointment of eight resident electoral commissioners. The Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered seven commercial banks in the country to remit to the federal government a total of $793,200,000 allegedly hidden with them. The presiding judge, Justice Chuka Obiozo, says the banks have violated the government's Treasury single account policy and the Constitution. The banks are to remit the monies to the designated CBN Asset Recovery Dollar Account. The Office of the Attorney General of the Federation had approached the court seeking retrieval of the funds to avoid diversion, misapplication and theft. Now, leaders from various regions of southern Nigeria have continued their search for ways to douse prevailing tensions in the country arising from agitations among various groups. The leaders gathered in Lagos today to strategize on developing a national consensus on the many issues threatening the unity of the country. Restructuring of the nation was at the center of their deliberations, and they say the consultations will continue. We are taught that a communique would have been issued at the end of this meeting, but the meeting was so, so, um, so serious that um, we could not conclude some of the decisions on how to proceed on restructuring. And so consultation is ongoing. So it is just to let you know that effort is on to douse the tension in the country, to ensure that there is stability and there is national cohesion. From the south and the north, leaders have been meeting and consulting to ensure that we keep the nation stable. Nigeria's former Vice President Alhaji Atiku Abubakar has been explaining his position on the call for the restructuring of the country, saying he supports the move to drive change at the local level. Alhaji Atiku, who was speaking at a public lecture at the University of Nigeria, said restructuring is to activate the spirit of productivity rather than sharing. He called on every Nigerian, irrespective of party and regional affiliation, to see restructuring as the only thing that will guarantee the unity of the nation. It's a gathering of academics, politicians, students and members of the senior staff club of the University of Nigeria and Suka. The aim is to dissect a major issue that has dominated political discourse in the country in recent times, the restructuring of Nigeria. Um, all the distinguished members but before the lecture kicks off, the induction of the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, as the life patron of the senior staff club of the University of Nigeria and Suka. Other newly inducted members are the former governor of Akwaibom State, Obong Vito Atta, the former Minister of Aviation, Osita Chidoka, the President General Ohanezin Digbo, Chief John Wodo, the former Minister of Education, Chimwe Obaji, and Professor Val Ekechuku, amongst others. And then comes time for the keynote address by the former Vice President, Atiku Abubakar. 
a lecture organized by the Senior Staff Club of the University of Nigeria. My vision of restructuring will not make some states richer and others poorer. Restructuring is a win-win for all Nigerian states. The restructuring I want to see happen is changing the structure of our country to take power from the elite and give it back to whom it belongs, the people. The chairman of the occasion, the president general of Ahanez Indigo, John Wodo, also lends his voice on the need to restructure Nigeria. He says restructuring will help create a productive Nigeria. In a restructured Nigeria, in which the people of the area that constitute the federal units have ownership of their resources, Northern Nigeria could become the new Netherlands of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. While the former vice president shares his views about restructuring to include devolution of powers, transferring leadership from the elite to the ordinary Nigerian, and giving more powers to the state in the areas of road maintenance and education, others will just suggest the adoption of the 2014 Comfab report. To party politics now, the governors of the All Progressives Congress say they are working hard to keep their house in order and will ensure that the set goals of the party are achieved. After a meeting with the acting president at the presidential villa today, the governors say they are not worried about the antics of the opposition to undermine the unity of the party. The meeting, which lasted for more than an hour, had in attendance governors of Kogi, Kwara, Benue, Undo, Imo, Zamfara, Plateau, Adamawa, Niger, Kebi, Kaduna, Ogun, and Oyo, and some deputy governors. We came to see the acting president and to talk issues that relate to our party uh, because people seem to have forgotten that the acting president and the president are members of APC. So we've come to discuss issues related to our party and our government and how to move our party forward. Precisely. Well, it's, it's, there's a lot of issues we discuss to move the party forward and how to strengthen the party, how to uh, make sure that uh, our party remains victorious in all elections. Absence of Mr. President or President or Acting President, we're just putting our house in order and making sure things are in the right form before we kick off. But PDP is, not, is a non-issue, complete non-issue, non-issue. Um, we don't even care about that. Um, we defeated them when they were in power, so well, what was different when, when we were now in power? Thank you. Meanwhile, the chairman of the People's Democratic Party's caretaker committee, Senator Ahmed Makarfi, has dissolved the reconciliation committee headed by the governor of Bayelsa State, Syriake Dixon. The committee was set up to resolve the leadership crisis that rocked the party before the matter was resolved by the Supreme Court last week. Senator Makarfi says the party would inaugurate a new reconciliation and disciplinary committee ahead of the party's convention. After the Supreme Court judgment, I said no victory, no I stand by that. Yes. Some say, ah, I didn't convince them. I said, okay, I had acted on their behalf. <laughs> but I did draw a line. It is a different thing after saying that if any individual will continue to undermine the fight. The issue of uh, reconstruction, the reconciliation committee, and also putting in place a uh, disciplinary committee in place so that, that the two should go together. But disciplinary is not to do with the past, it's to do with what will be happening from now onwards. Now, the challenges facing Africa may be enormous, but this is a good time to take responsibility and solve the problems. Well, that's the position of Nigeria's former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, and the co-authors of the book, Making Africa Work. They are all set to embark on a tour across West Africa to promote the work which they consider to be a handbook for Africa's economic success. Our Johannesburg Bureau Chief, Betty Dibia, reports. Making Africa Work recognizes Africa's doubling population of mostly young people living in urban cities and connected to the world via mobile devices. And it's a guide to improving Africa's capacity for economic growth and job creation. There's a premium on knowing what not to do. 
lots of there are lots of development plans uh, uh, in Africa. Uh, most every five years, most countries uh, create development plans. We read a lot of them in the process of writing this book. Believe me, they spend about a third of their content listing things to do or listing goals and objectives and not actually providing the how, the how to translate ideas into action on the ground. The 317-page book, complete with crib notes and even a song, for those blessed with a shorter attention span, has received a lot of praise. But cynics say a lot still has to be said about Africa's leaders not being held to account and corruption on so many levels. We have chosen to look for, on the positive side, what are things that have worked, what are examples of success in Africa, and not only in Africa, we go as far as Singapore and across as far as uh, uh, Colombia and to see and identify what has worked. It's, it's a very interesting um, base for, 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 to, for all of us uh, to think about uh, the, the current situation of Africa and its future. The English and French versions of Making Africa Work and its authors will be touring West Africa. Hopefully, policymakers and implementers will take a leaf or two and bring positive change to a fast-changing continent. From Pretoria, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. A new criteria for the disbursement of the Ecological Fund has been recommended to cut down on discriminatory spending and sanitize the management of the fund. The new guidelines are contained in a final report by the Ad Hoc Committee of the Council on Ecological Fund, headed by the Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rafai. The Abuja State, the Abuja Governor, that's the Abia State Governor, I beg your pardon, Mr. Ukeze Bazo, told State House correspondents after the Council meeting that the committee has come up with a robust governance structure. In Council today also, the Committee on Ecological Fund submitted its final report and recommends a robust governance structure, stringent disbursement criteria as the way forward. The chairman of that committee, Governor El Rufai, recommended among other things that a robust governance structure and stringent disbursement criteria will be required to sanitize the management of the fund going forward. In their recommendations, they prescribe that physical visitation by the ecological office team and the on-the-spot assessment and verification of the ecological disaster was very, very important. They also recommended that technical evaluation of, dis of disaster by experts in disaster management was also key. There was need, according to their recommendation, for community involvement in the entire process. Prior to the disaster, they recommended need for advocacy and evidence to prove that such disaster occurred. In part two, after the break, Amnesty International accuses Cameroonian security forces of brutal torture of Boko Haram terrorists. Cameroon false report says rights group is a tool of Boko Haram propaganda. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.